And good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending upon where you are joining us from uh, around the globe. This is Robert Leake, Director of Marketing here at eFolder, and I want to thank you all for joining us here today to talk with Tamara Gonzalez as around um, her MSP and how she's been pursuing how to hire a perfect farmer. Uh, we'll jump into our content in just a moment, just a few housekeeping items as we get started. Just a reminder, as you probably heard, everyone is currently on mute, but we are definitely going to make this an interactive session. So Tamara's got a lot of great info to share with us today. However, if you have any questions that pop up amidst um, the conversation, please just shoot them over to us in the Q&A bar that hopefully is there with your GoToWebinar uh, control panel, and we'll address those as they come in. Um, also, we are recording this, and we will be putting this out on the eFolder YouTube channel, along with sending it out to anyone who's joined us as well as registered today as well. So I want to make sure that you've got that um, at your fingertips if you hear any information and you want to go back to uh, for future reference. So again, thank you all for joining us. Um, really appreciate it. And at this point in time, I'd like to introduce Tamara. So Tamara, if you would be so kind, we'll start off with... Uh, make sure my buttons are working correctly. Maybe give us a, a little bit of an overview about uh, yourself and Touchpoint Networks. Thank you so much um, for having me. Uh, good morning from Portland, Oregon. It's still morning time here. Um, Touchpoint Networks, we've been in business since 2001. We have three locations in Oregon, um, in Portland, Medford, and Eugene. We currently have 10 employees, and I'm one of the partners, and I have two partners. Awesome. Thank you. And Tamara, as it relates to you know, 16 years, you guys have been uh, in business for a while, so congratulations on all the success. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about maybe your business model, maybe how you started out, and, and how that has continued to evolve over, over, the, you know, over the last 16 years or so? We started out as a voice interconnect. Um, we've been, been doing voice over IP. Um, we're really well known for large voice over IP networks. Um, and we've started to get into the MSP business um, and putting people's IT in the cloud um, and things like that. Wonderful. And, and we did get a question, maybe if you could give us a range um, without getting too detailed, but as far as your annual revenues go, can you maybe north of a certain number or, or something that you'd feel comfortable sharing with the audience? Around two and a half million. Awesome. Thank you very much for that. So a lot of success over the years. You've grown that revenue, and uh, I think you've been over the last... Uh, few times you, you guys have really been trying to figure out you know the infrastructure that you guys are employing and really you know kind of looking at expanding you said you're at 10 employees now and you've been looking for a farmer to add to your business model for quite a while if I'm not mistaken correct yeah we have actually tried to hire an inside salesperson for a long time and we were not having very much success but we finally found the one <laughs> Awesome. And and just curious, as it relates to kind of the inside sales and, and the customer advocate as, as you deem it, um, I think a lot of people, you know, term as, you know, farmer, account management, et cetera, will we'll refer to as customer advocate today. What what made you really focus on that farmer, the, the inside sales perspective versus maybe a more hunting role uh, for your business? We felt like we were missing out on a lot of low hanging fruit. Um, since we started out as a voice interconnect, um, we have a very large customer base. Typically, companies with voice customers, um, we don't hear from our customers until something breaks, and that's a lot different than being an MSP when you're constantly talking to your customers, and so you have a lot smaller customer base. We had a lot of voice um, customers that didn't know we were doing IT and we needed somebody picking up that low hanging fruit. Um, we also have voice customers that have manufactured discontinued equipment. Um, so we were, we were missing out on some opportunities when uh, we weren't communicating with our customers enough when their products were discontinued. Okay, so you know, so it sounds like outside of you know having someone who's going on knocking different doors, it seemed like there was 
is a lot of value. And I think that's probably consistent across all businesses, right? You know, whether it's an MSP business, uh, whether it's a vendor business or whether it's, you know, a, a, a few other, maybe even more consumer centric stuff, but there's a lot of value, I think, in those, in that existing base. And, and that seems to be an overriding theme. I think it, it can apply to most businesses. Very cool. Um, so let's talk about the pursuit of that farmer, right? So uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk about some great success that you've had recently, but uh, I believe it's uh, it's taken taking you a few steps to get there, if I'm not mistaken. So can you can you walk us through maybe the last ten years or so, and and some of the previous uh, previous folks you've brought on board? Sure. Um, we actually have had three previous hires. Um, the first one. I really made a huge mistake with hiring because in the end, I found out he didn't like talking to people he didn't know. And he didn't know our customers because he was brand new to our business. Um, that was a huge <laughs> hurdle um, and definitely not a good personality trait for the job. Um, the second one, the second one that we hired um, just got really mired down into the details and instead of talking to the customers just got so involved with all the technical details that they weren't communicating with the customers and the communication side was lacking the third one um, i made a huge mistake as well she ended up not being she didn't like being bossed around by another woman and she i found out she, later she lied on her resume so that one was a tough one <laughs> She was oh older than me. Yeah. Oh, it sounds like you've had, you know, thank goodness it wasn't a three strikes in your out situation because that fourth one, you know, I think we'll get to in just a moment. But it sounds like you've dealt with a lot as it relates to trying to fill this role for, for touch point. Just curious, um, obviously, you know, probably a few different answers here, but how long did those those individuals hang around and, and were a part of your company? I would say at least a year each one of them we kept too long oh, wow. and, it, yeah, and that's, it was I, very um costly i can imagine i mean i can imagine the cost obviously you put a lot of energy into finding these individuals and we'll get to maybe some of the steps that you went through um maybe the next time around if you will but you know there's a huge impact i think when you when you make a decision and it doesn't work out and you have to start all over again and you've already invested that time so what was it were, were you getting value from these folks during that year or year plus or was it just a struggle just to get them up to speed and on board and and really just try to figure out if they even fit i felt like uh i did the job a lot with them as i was training them so once I slowly turned over the reins to them, it kind of fell apart. And it was because they didn't have the right personality type for the job. I mean, they might have had one trait that was good for the position, but then it just wasn't a good mix of, you know, having good detail is good for the job, but if you can't communicate with people, then that's not good. So it needs to be a mix of communication and details. Gotcha. I mean, we're not talking about, you know, software coders here, right? We're talking about a little slightly more well-rounded professional that has a lot of different traits to them. And I think we're going to uh, here in a few slides get to uh, some things that really turned you on to, to those types of capacities, as well as how to find out if, if your candidates had them, I believe. So um, right. excellent. Thank you very much. Um, next up, you know, we talk about the three times that you, you struggled, but this time you've had much more success. I think the, the person that you've got in your customer advocate role now has been around for about a year, about the same, and you're, you're seeing a lot more differences pursuant to the other three. So can you tell us a little bit about how you, you landed with the individual you're working with today? So this slide is a kind of an overview of everything that we've done, but um, we really focused on the hiring process and we took our time um, we set goals for what we wanted to accomplish, and then we also set goals with the person that we hired. Um, we came up with a training plan, and we had a lot of help from Technology Assurance Group, which um, for short is called TAG. Um, they helped yep. us do a lot, um, and it's a member organization of companies just like us all across the United States and Canada. Um, we also 
did a lot of tiger paw training, which is our what where we keep our customer database. And then also we spent a lot of one on time one on one time with her and going on appointments and things like that. But as far as tags involvement, um, they helped us review review resumes we thought would would be good. Um, they also reviewed an a an achievement assessment that we had her take at the end of the interview process. They did a phone interview with her um, and then they helped us initially do some webinar training and then there was also an on-site class we sent her to and she's also on a, it's basically a call for inside salespeople and it happens once a month and so they can get ideas or if they're having trouble with a certain, you know, customer or problem, then they can get ideas from the other customer advocates. Excellent. Excellent. So I think it now's a good time to say that, you know, you and I first uh, crossed paths at uh, TAG quarterly meetings, and, and I think you presented on a topic similar to this, and I could just see the passion that you brought to it, as well as the intrigue from the other folks in the room. So, yeah, the 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 everyone at TAG is, is certainly great, and I, I see everything that they've kind of helped provide you that seems like it was in addition to, again, those three challenging individuals you brought on. So maybe just starting at the top, uh, maybe touching on a few points here that you, you've highlighted, and, and that's really around the process. Can you can you inform our audience a little bit about maybe how this process was different pursuant to the, the three previous times and maybe even uh, fold in some of the goal perspectives as you were looking at uh, from, from that, if it differed from when you weren't quite as successful with the other three candidates? Uh, when we got, we would have a first interview with somebody and we would be really excited about the person, think they were awesome, and then we would do a disc personality test with them and it ended up you know they were lacking some of the traits we were looking for even though that they interviewed very well um, and some other things that I know we're getting to on the next slides but um, just having a thorough process and being patient and waiting for the right person because if you hire the wrong person it's very expensive and it just drains the life out of you trying to train a person that's not fit for the job. I can imagine. I can imagine. Okay, wonderful. Um, and we got a question uh, from, from Jay Collin. Just a, again, a TAG stands for Technology Assurance Group. And it's a one of a national peer community. And it's one of the one, and it's the one that Touchpoint works with today. Correct, Tamara? That's right. Um, their website's tagnational.com if you want to check them out. I thank you very much for that. Awesome. So let's let's talk about uh, and again some of what you did differently. And, and I assume uh, that the tools that how you've landed with uh, I don't want to take spoil anything, but did you use the disk profile and the higher level uh, products in in previous instances or only just recently last year? The disk I think we may have used um, in the previous processes. Um, but we did not use this um, higher level or the achiever test. It's a more in-depth test um, about mental aptitudes. Do they have the vocabulary? Are they, you know, quick to learn? Things like that. That's a more gotcha. in-depth okay. test, um, not just personality. Okay. And as a, and we'll get actually uh, for those on the phone, we're going to get into some of those results here in just a moment, so you can see what those test results and and the assessments look like. Um, what was as maybe using a higher level specifically? Um, you know, it's a little bit more expensive than the disc profile, but what uh, you know outside of just the words of you know and, and the results, did higher level provide you any additional insight that you felt like you may not have gotten if you just went down a, a more automated road? It kind of gives you a glimpse into the person that you're going to get to know before you know them. So okay. I like that about that. And that is, we since it is kind of an expensive test, we do it right before we're going to offer the person the job. Okay, guys. Gotcha. So that was right at the very end. You felt like you vetted out the candidate, and then just this was kind of a final checkpoint to make sure that everything you think is is coming out and and really how they perform on on just general questions. Correct. Correct. Awesome. 
Oh, very cool. Um, so let's just maybe take a peek at that. We'll look at the disk results first. And I'm not personally uh, familiar with this. So if you'd be kind enough to, to walk us all through what these bars mean and these scores and, and what you were able to take away from this. So the DISC test is um, basically a personality test, and DISC stands for Dominance, Influence, Steadiness, and Conscientiousness. Um, so you can see if the person is dominant or an influencer or if they are high on steadiness or conscientiousness. Um, and what we are looking for is somebody kind of in these ranges that has the higher um, influence. So they're like a confident, charming person, enthusiastic. Um, and then we like the S because that gives us the detail-oriented um, part of it. And the C gives you the detail-oriented too. Um, they're a good listener. The conscientious, the C is the accuracy, preciseness, they're analytical. But you don't want those two, the S and the C, to be higher than the I, in my opinion, because um, then you're going to get just way too detail-oriented of a person that's not good at communicating. Okay, wonderful. And I assume that depending upon the types of roles um, that you're that you're looking to fill, right, whether it's a, a customer advocate in the form of a, of a farmer of sorts, or if it's someone else, that these ranges would differ, and it's really about finding the right fit for the role that you're filling at the time. Right. Like if you were looking for a hunter, you would want a higher D than this. I see. Gotcha. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Um, and I think that that may even be a little bit more uh, visible to, to everyone as we start getting to the Achiever Report. And we have two slides here uh, for, this is for the mental attitude. So can you walk everyone through maybe a little bit of, of what we're looking at here? So um, when you uh, go to higher level and ask them for a test, you tell them what you're trying to hire for. And we told them we were looking for a customer advocate inside sales. And they give you these um, parentheses bars. So on the top one, mental acuity, they want to see the person be between the five and the seven. So if they land between those bars, it's, it's a good fit. But the, the ones that are outside are the black, like three, four, and eight. Um, those are outside. So if it's just something to be aware of. So vocabulary for this might be a little bit limited. Um, she was very high on the business terms knowledge, which actually I think is a good thing. Um, numerical perception, maybe not quite in the good range, but close. Yep. So the people at higher level after you have the person take the test and they get the results, they, they'll walk you through all of these things and tell you um, and they'll explain all the results. So it's not okay. just like you're getting the test back and have to figure it out yourself. Very cool. Okay, so there's actually a couple of things here then. So you get from higher learning kind of a range that's what we would call kind of ideal or whatever the case is. It's more guidelines, not really mandates, it seems. And then you can see where your various candidates fall into, whether they're in that range or maybe close enough, right? I think in this instance, you had some maybe right in the range, a couple a little below, but still close, and then also overachieving in some areas as well. So it sounds like that just by looking at it, there's you know a lot of great insight to have as, as an employer, but at the same time, higher, uh, higher learning actually, it, it sounds like there's a conversation that's had, and they walk you through some of this as well to give you additional detail, correct? Right, and they'll tell you, you know, some of the gotchas, some of the things to look out for, some of the things maybe you can work on. So it's a good test. I mean, and it's, I would say it's very accurate. Oh, okay, even better, right? So not only is all this information flying at you when after you've started working with your customer advocate, you're seeing the validity of these results, which I think is even better. Excellent. Right, um, and so, I okay, should so say the, that. I'm sorry to interrupt. I should say that we okay. do share the DISC test with the applicant, but we do not share this Achiever report. Okay. 
So on that note, uh, so we talked about the, the mental side. So this is the personality results um, as well. And it looks like there's a few more categories. Uh, anything specific as it relates to this specific square, it looks like it's kind of a rinse and repeat just on a different aspect of your candidate's um, personality. So, right, yeah, different aspects of, of them in, in doing the job. And and it seems like uh, I, I see two things that really stand out. Obviously, there's a lot in the range, um, but specifically as it relates to customer advocacy, I would think, and I'm, I'd be curious to see your perspective, is when you saw these scores as far as an eight in the realms of communication and motivation, that seems to be even the kind of exclamation points on, on, that, on that candidate's potential. Right. And I do, I mean, it is very accurate because sometimes I think she might over communicate and be very interactive with the customer when maybe she should pull back a little bit. So it, it's a pretty accurate test. Awesome. Awesome. And, and we did just get a question on the legalities of assessments during the hiring process, I think specifically around personalities. Um, just from my perspective, uh, I, I, I think it absolutely is. I think that's where uh, companies like Higher Learning and DISC come into play. I'm certainly not an attorney, so I wouldn't take this as, as counsel for any in any regard, but um, I know we've, we, I think we've all gone through some level of assessments, whether it's mental acuity, personality. Um, I, I do believe this is maybe not a standard process, but I believe for those uh, employers who are looking to get the right, 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 right candidates, it's becoming more common practice. So I'll just say right. that. And and I, also I don't know think if you went down there. Yeah, I was going to ask for your perspective, Tamara, on that. It's beneficial. I mean, I don't know the legalities either. Um, I know that we would not tell them that we're not hiring someone based on their personality that or this test, but um, it's beneficial for them to be hired into a position they're going to thrive. And if they're going to struggle, they're not going to be happy either. So, right. It, it's just a part of the equation, right? I mean, there's the right. interview process, there's background checks, and these assessments are just a part of that equation. And Tamara, I think you bring up an ex excellent point, right? It's as much as employers are trying to find the right fits for their companies, it's almost, um, you know, as we kind of think about our cultures and, and, and kind of have some other perspectives as well far as what revolves around business today, it's also very good for, you know, to bring in someone who you know that you're positioning for success or feel like they're being brought in to position for success. So again, just more pieces to the puzzle that I think can help everyone. Right. And we actually, I know this is in slides farther down, but the positions that she held before were much more detail oriented. And I think that our, the person that we hired believes this position fits her much better because she does um, like talking to people, like meeting new people, and that isn't something that was a part of her jobs in the past. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, just a couple of questions on these assessments, and uh, I think we had the one perspective earlier, but the the higher learning, that was about $150 for, it was a one-time charge. Is that, is that about right? Correct. I think it's 165 and it, it's called higher level. I'm sorry, higher level. Thank you. Um, and then we also had a question coming in from Mike as it relates to keeping the uh, person who's taking these assessments honest as it relates to kind of their scoring. And I think it would be a good opportunity and, and an excellent point to say, and, and again, keep me honest, Tamara, I'm taking the, a stab in the dark here, but if this was not just someone going through these, looks like, call it 10 categories and ranking themselves. This is a multifaceted um, assessment with many, many questions. And based on their responses to all of those questions in aggregate, they're then placed within a communication level, a motivation level, et cetera. They don't just simply go through 10 questions and put in their own perspective on where they stack up. Is that correct? Right. The DISC test, um, there's a, a lot of questions, and we just tell them to go with their you know first instinct gut instinct but the achiever report from higher level that's a timed test um, because some of it is based on mental acuity things like that we don't want them taking a few days to go over this test so it is a timed yes. test okay 
Wonderful. And again, wonderful questions coming in. So folks, please keep those, those rolling. Much appreciated. Um, so let's talk about uh, your customer advocate that's, that's with you at Touchpoint today. So I'll just uh, let you, uh, I think her name is Susan, and, and tell us a little bit about Susan. And, and maybe even, I think you've really hit on it already, but after a year in, kind of what you've seen as it relates to the accuracy of those assessments. Well, when we, um, something about Susan is when we first interviewed her, she immediately, um, my husband is the president of the company, and she immediately put him at ease, and he is not, he doesn't let his guard down, <laughs> but immediately she put him at ease, they had a good conversation, um, so that was like a huge strength when she's going to be going out and meeting new people, our customer base. Um, we're talking about you could be meeting someone from the president all the way down to the person that answers the phone. Um, she puts people at ease very quickly. Um, she's good at building relationships and she's got a really warm personality. She's very passionate. Um, so uh, setting goals with her has been really easy um, and she's eager to learn. Um, she has definitely a list of goals and she's she's doing well um, she's good at developing rapport with people and I've been really pleasantly surprised that she has been able to close things faster than I thought she could um, and asking for the sale wonderful wonderful it sounds like you know, when you when you were probably setting out those goals for what you wanted in a customer advocate and, and putting the again that equation in place to helping you find it, it seems like you've really landed on a good one. So so congratulations on that. That's wonderful. Um, let's uh, maybe take a, a, a peek at Susan Adams herself and uh, any what uh, as it related to who she is and, and where she came from. So we found her um, from the website Indeed.com. We put an add on there and um, she was one of the applicants in the past we had never used indeed you know 10 years ago there was no indeed but we've been using craigslist or the paper or online or things like that um, she recently a couple of years ago relocated from the east coast to the west coast um, she had always worked for fortune and global 500 companies Gannett's a big media company, um, and then over here on the West Coast, she worked for Peace Health Medical Group before coming to us. Her experience was in telecom um, technology. She would do cost analysis on phone bills, and she did some consulting, but it was all more internally in these companies because they were so large. I see. So it seems like that on top of you know all of the personality and mental perspectives, it seemed like her background was a fair, uh, varied in all the ways that would make for a good customer advocate. Right. Awesome. Um, okay. So let's. Uh, so she's been on board for a year, so or about a year, or so if I'm not mistaken. So let's maybe talk about what's made that year successful. Um, she's. From her personality test and from knowing her, she's motiva motivated by talking to a variety of people. She's very comfortable talking to new people. She's charming. Um, she's enthusiastic. She's optimistic. Um, she goes um, and she has no problem calling people up and making an appointment, just saying, I want to come meet you. Um, so... I think, and she really enjoys that. Um, it's not something that she had in any of her jobs that she previously had. Um, and as far as personal accountability, she has goals. She has a base, um, a base salary, and then we pay her a small commit, small commissions on everything that she brings in. She also has personal goals about um, where she wants to live. She wants a puppy. <laughs> Um, she wants a certain car, so um, she's keeping herself accountable, and we kind of walk through her goals every so often to see where we are on those goals. Uh, let's see. And she's, like I said, very passionate, um, 
about what she's talking about, which I think the best salespeople I've ever seen are always passionate about what they do. And she's good at building those relationships and putting people at ease. So it just all fits together. Okay, awesome. Um, we got a question from Kurt uh, asking about how to, uh, her transition from moving from an internal focus to consulting um, and, and kind of how those are pretty different and, and how she ex worked with that before Touchpoint and then evolving to that more external role. Well, we set her up, um, like I said, with um, training from TAG, Technology Assurance Group, where uh, she learned a certain inside sales process. So like everything we've been talking about, the hiring process, we've done a certain process. And for inside sales, now we are doing an inside sales process. So we contact the customer either with a phone call or by email, um, seeing an opportunity maybe with a manufactured discontinued system or they call in for service on something else and we see, oh, this is a good one to go talk to because of this reason. And then she'll make a phone call, set up a first appointment. And then we have other steps that she follows to do a sales process and identify opportunities. Excellent. So it seems like you guys, so some of that transition was natural for her. And then at the same time, you guys are coaching her up, which we'll talk about some of the coaching aspects, but, but you're kind of putting her in a position again, putting her in a position to succeed as she moves to that uh, kind of evolved, I'll say at this point into that external role. Right. Right. Awesome. Um, just, uh, so we've gotten a few more questions coming in. Uh, I think uh, from Keith, you'll find, especially close to home, Tamara, he says that they right now are also 0 for 3 and finding uh, a role of this nature. And he's just wondering, how long did it take for you to know that Susan was the one? Uh, <laughs> well, I would say it probably took a good nine months to even find her. And we, we turned down, you know, like I said, we had some people that interviewed really well, but then when we started delving into things, we would find that they didn't have the attributes, the personality attributes um, that was going to work for this position or to be successful because we really wanted somebody who was both a good, good at communication and good with some details. Okay. So, so and then after about nine, nine months, yeah. So if that's about nine yeah. months for her to even get on the radar, once you once y'all cross paths, how long did it take to really say, okay, we're ready to make her an offer? Um, I would say it was pretty fast. It was within a month that we did the whole. Oh wow! You know, uh, first interview, uh, we did the disc test. We had a phone interview with Tag. Um, we did another on-site interview. And then we did the Achiever test, and that is a test that she could do from home, but it is timed. Um, and then we had her come back in and talk to her about an offer, and she accepted. So that the part okay. that part went pretty fast once you find somebody that's good, but it took a long time to find this person. And then after that, after the hiring, I would say. I spent a lot of time with her for the first four months doing the inside sales process and going out on appointments with her. Okay, wonderful. Um, and just a couple of questions that I think are jumping ahead a little bit. Um, Keith, uh, actually it was Robert who was asking about some metrics and in a couple of slides we're going to talk about some of the impact that she's made on Touchpoint. So we'll get to that in just a moment. Um, we'll transition now to kind of the customer advocate role for, for you know you guys specifically Tamara and just um, as we move into that we did get a question about her the specific base and compensation levels that that you have susan on just as an fyi we will not be delving into those specifics that's pretty private information along with the fact that you know portland may be different than la that may be different from mid middle america so, so um you know we won't be touching on her specifics of of her base um and we'll be you know maybe tamara if you can maybe give us some of the perspectives on these percentages but can you walk us through maybe the the customer advocate 
advocate role at Touchpoint Networks, what you have her working on, and then again, um, some information around how you're compensating her. So we have a huge base of customers that have voice um, phone systems on premise, and every like everyone knows, things are moving to the cloud. Um, we've been having her focus on you know, those systems, the manufactured discontinued systems and going after those and talking about, um, we sell a couple of cloud uh, solutions for voice, Pulsar 360 and then the Zoltis. Um, if people aren't ready to jump into something like that, we also have just a regular old NEC hybrid key system. She's also able to sell uh, carrier services, so she can sell SIP trunks, uh, she can sell internet um, and she gets paid for those sales and then talking to our customers about managed services she's found a few opportunities where one one um, they weren't happy with their IT people another one the IT person was quitting so we've had an opportunity to propose managed services and we are starting to get her more trained on um, cloud, uh, we do cloud jumper as well. So putting their servers, servers in the cloud. Okay. So just, um, maybe a little bit for the audience about, so you guys, obviously, as, as I'm sure everyone here does pretty broad set of solutions you're selling. Is there a way that you, or was there an approach that you took as far as how to onboard her and ramp her up from one type of solution uh, into the other? Or how did you approach that? It seems like the managed services are something more recent and the cloud-based ones. What was the perspective as far as starting from a point A and as we've gone through the last 12 months or so? Yeah, so she, um, her background is in voice. So the easiest thing for us to get her ramped up fast was to teach her about the hosted voice and um, she had a fast ramp up period for that, learned it easily, um, configuring that kind of thing is just basically one page spreadsheet. We have sales reps that can even help her or um, reps from the manufacturers that can even help her do the spreadsheet. So that was the fastest because she already had a background in telecom, which is awesome. Um, okay. The managed services part and the IT is taking a little bit longer because that is not something that she, that's not in her background that she's done before. Okay. So really it was positioning her for success based on her past experiences. It seems like it was kind of the, the basis of that recipe. Right. Okay, um, and just really quick before we jump into the next piece on this slide, uh, we got a question from Keith, and just curious, um, how many clients are you guys supporting at Touchpoint Networks? Uh, it's over a thousand. Oh wow! Okay, thank you. Um, so, so lots of opportunity for Susan to engage across the board then, um, and in that realm. Um, so again, without uh, we've shared with, we won't be getting too very specific here. But as it relates to the compensation, um, maybe just some of these variables, how you've landed on them, and and how you've approached them uh, from an implementation perspective. I should say, as far as the thousand, we only have her focused on two of our offices. So, the thousand is across the board in all three of our offices. Okay. Um, and the thousand is big. It's a big number because we have a lot of voice customers. Of course. As far as the compens compensation, um, so we have a kind of like a managed services program for voice systems that are sold. So we pay her a percentage of those systems. Um, the hosted voice, we pay her a percentage of the recurring revenue that we get. Um, if she's involved in any ads, moves, and changes, something like a headset or somebody buys 10 headsets, she gets 2% of it. Um, our partner program, which is basically having remote support, um, and it's a monthly bill to the customer, she gets one month. So if the customer is paying us $100 a month, she gets $100 every year that it renews. Um, as far as carrier services, she gets paid on SIP trunks that she sells, and then also internet um, managed services. She gets a percentage of the net, not the gross sale, but the net that Touchpoint makes. 
um, she gets a part of the like the one time setup fee and then she gets a piece of the recurring. So she could really build up her income pretty huge with all of the recurring for the hosted voice, the carrier services and the managed services. Okay, wonderful. It sounds like while there's obviously a lot of moving pieces there, I would assume that just from uh, uh, a happiness level and, and from her perspective, it's just a lot of opportunity for her to make money. And, and I would assume that, you know, as a salesperson, we all know how that, you know, sales is driven by that. So a lot of ways for her to succeed, I think it would, would be a, a good takeaway there. For sure. Wonderful. Awesome. Okay. Um, and now we can, uh, let's talk about, so we talked about the pre-process and, and we've talked a little bit about, you know, how you've set her up to succeed and, and the compensation, but let's talk about what you guys are doing for her. And I think probably you specifically in this regard. So can you tell us about the coaching uh, as, as you've gone through the last 12 months or so? So every day I talk to her in the morning, usually about what her, what she's planning on doing today. Um, and who she's planning on contacting. I go through her calendar. Uh, so we want to see a certain number of appointments. We would like to see a certain number of appointments every week that are set. Um, we would love to have about five appointments a week, but um, could go all the way up to 10 because you're going to have first appointments and then you're going to have follow-up follow -up appointments. I've been going out on in the beginning, I was going on every appointment with her, and now I just go on the ones that she's not quite sure about or the bigger ones. Um, as far as the hosted, okay. the the size opportunities we let, have had her going on, we try to keep it to companies that are 25 people or less because those are um, easier for her to do. The bigger opportunities, we're not ready to have her do yet okay and then we Wonderful. we initially she made a list of goals and then we reviewed those over over time we've reviewed those a couple times and kind of adjusted things when maybe some of them were really too high to to achieve right now okay fair enough um, thank you. Uh, we did have uh, a question come in around leads. Uh, Will was asking about how does she get them, or is it mostly pre-existing customers? And I think the the punchline is is that it is definitely pre-existing customers. A customer advocate is farming, um, you know, kind of looking at your existing base. But just with that being the platform, how does she identify those? I mean, because obviously we still get leads, right? As as a, a marketer, as, as two marketers here, we still know that leads come in the form of existing clients. So how does she go in and, and really cultivate that opportunity? So in our Tiger Paw customer database, we labeled the the, the lowest hanging fruit for, for us when she first started was manufacture discontinued equipment. And we... Um, tagged those. So anytime any of those customers call us and request work to be done, it sends us an e it sends me an email and then I forward it to her saying this one's a good opportunity to talk to them. She also we also created a list um so she contacted a certain number of those customers every day via email just saying by the way we're we're still able to service you, but it's getting harder and harder to do so. I would like to have some time with you to go over, you know, we we don't want you to get in a position where your equipment's not working any, anymore. So can we set up a time to meet? And then she'll follow up with a phone call. Awesome. Okay, so and and I think that's the key, right? Is that you know someone uh, who who's seen a lot of success in the customer advocate realm. Sometimes it's just simply by staying in touch. Uh, I think you you it's just whether it's a call in to check in, say hello, or a call in to your point about you know some equipment that's on the fringe of of being discontinued. You know, just having those conversations with your existing client base just really one provides I think confidence and and a comfort level with them and your business, but also really makes Maybe surfaces opportunities that you just wouldn't otherwise if they were just touching base when they called you. Right, because we 
our customers don't know everything that we do. We can do video surveillance. We can do access control, so door locks. Um, she's the one oh, wow. out there telling people when she meets with them. She's trying to find those opportunities. We we met with a a small resort or a hotel, and he told us next year he has it in the budget to do new video surveillance. We would have never, he probably never would have called us because he didn't know we did that. Um, that's not really our focus, but we do, we do do that. So she's uncovered some of those opportunities as well. The other way that she can get leads is if we send somebody a big invoice, it kind of triggers like, why are these people getting a big invoice? Are they not on any support program? Are they not on, you know, are we doing break fix? Are we doing, what are we doing? So. That's another way that we've been able to give her leads. Okay, wonderful. Um, and so maybe let's talk about turning some of those leads into um, really a fact. I know there's a lot of uh, curiosity about what she's been able to bring um, and we won't be terribly uh, specific here, but any insight I think that you could provide to the audience about her impact on the Touchpoint business. So I would say um, so far, well, she's been with us since last November, and she averages about four appointments a week. Um, she's been selling a little over 10 seats a month on Hosted because we have her working on 25 seats and less customers. Um, she oh, okay. has, un yeah. So and then if the people aren't ready to go to Hosted Voice, then she's talking to them about a actual premise system hardware in their office and she's been getting about two of those a month so on top of the hosted seat she's getting sales that include support and hardware on site and then uh, carrier sales and internet sales I would say probably a little bit one or more a month and then another thing she's she is a, a go-getter likes to talk to new people uh, we have somebody moving into another part of our office complex. She uncovered, and that was an opportunity that was not in our customer base, but she just befriended them. And now I think that's like a $35,000 sale that we're going to get here soon. Oh, wow. Congratulations to everyone on that one. That's awesome. Yeah, so, cool. that's, and so that's nice that she's out there just you know, meeting people, friendly, enthusiastic. Absolutely. And I think you've touched on some of these other points too, but maybe as, we, as we're starting to wrap things up, um, maybe just some of the more intangible perspectives that she's brought to, to the company as a whole. So we definitely have better communication with our customers. Um, we were not doing a very good job about informing them that they had manufactured discontinued product as far as the voice side, um, people like to hold on to their phone systems, but when we kind of have a plan, communicate, have a somewhat sense of urgency, then and we can take a look at their, you know, old phone lines, get them on SIP trunks, we can kind of cost justify, and so that has really increased both our you know, hardware equipment sales, but it's also increased our hosted sales and gotten those customers into newer technology, and that has increased our recurring revenue. Wonderful. Excellent. And um, again, I know we'll, we'll definitely pause here for uh, to take a few final questions if they exist, but um, if you were going to, you know, kind of leave our audience with a few words um, as it relates to their pursuit of their own customer advocates, what would you share with them? I would say be patient to find the right person and be thorough in the hiring process because it makes everything else easier. Excellent. Well, thank you. Um, and so we will uh, do one last call for questions. Um, and as those uh, will give them an opportunity to come in, I think, you know, I think that's it, right, Tamara, is the fact that, you know, keep calm, give yourself time, be confident in the process. Uh, I know that, you know, you guys were, had done this before, you know, the, the folks over at the te uh, Technology Assurance Group, uh, Larry, 
and, and the team really provides a lot of value to you to kind of help partner with you in that process and, and make sure that you're vetting out the candidates in the right way. So definitely kudos to them and, and kudos to you for, for having the wherewithal to you know, know that I think, you know, pursuit of something like this and such an integral role in your business, it, it does take a village to some degree to find the right people and certainly time to uh, to let the, the process breathe and, and come to fruition. So uh, that's some of the things that I've heard today. And, and I just want to thank you for sharing that with me and everyone else who's been on the line with us. And uh, it looks like we have maybe exhausted uh, those questions. Um, we'll give it just one last moment. And if nothing else comes in, Tamara, again, thank you for your time today. I, I really appreciate you joining me and everyone else and, and sharing this story. Uh, I mean, from the tools to just the simple things about, you know, don't, don't get ahead of yourself and be thorough, I think is, uh, you know, some of the simpler words of wisdom that we just need to hear sometimes. So thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. And so uh, folks on the line, I think that's it. We will uh, call this. A, a complete session today. I want to thank everyone again for joining us. Tamara and I, we appreciate it. And uh, again, keep an eye out for your inboxes for, uh, for copies of this uh, should you need it. And again, you can find it on our YouTube channel. So thanks everyone. Have a great rest of your Thursday. And uh, yeah, we uh, look forward to maybe touching base and uh, crossing paths in the near future. Tamara, thanks again. Have a great one. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye.